Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Lambton, Kent Middlesex. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. The amazing thing about hockey in Canada is how it brings us together. It's our shorthand. It's an experience we all share, whether it's shinny in the neighbourhood, early mornings at the arena, or wearing jerseys the day of a big game. And we don't just come together over hockey for the big wins, the Olympic medals, underdog playoff runs, or celebrating hometown all-stars. We come together in the hard times, as we have over the last few days after the tragic crash involving the Humboldt Broncos. Our nation's hearts have broken for that team and their families. I don't think they've been far from anyone's mind since Friday. And we come together to support hockey in our local communities, to lift up the next generation. In my riding of Lambton, Kent, Middlesex, we have been celebrating the town of Lucan, which has been named Craft Hockeyville 2018. Wow. It was amazing to see so many people, not just from Lucan, but from Thorndale, Ilderton, and many other Ontario small towns rally together to support Lucan hockey. The arena is the heart of the town. It's where friendships, character, and love of our national game have been built for generations. Lucan's rich hockey tradition has created incredible community spirit and pride. I want to thank everyone who supported Lucan for Craft Hockeyville 2018. I think it's clearer now than ever why this is important and why we do these things. We support hockey because hockey supports us right back. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. I had the honour of hosting a very special event in our riding. Every year, our province recognizes volunteers. Well, one of the specific awards is for women and girls who are strengthening our communities through leadership. This year, we hosted our first annual Leading Women, Leading Girls award ceremony at our downtown library. It was a packed house filled with recipients, their nominators, friends, family and community supporters. We recognize almost 20 women and girls who volunteer and contribute in many ways. We recognized youth, a pilot, a museum volunteer, Rotarians, safety advocates, service club members, artists and musicians, an Indigenous truth sharer, advocates against violence against women, cancer support givers, human rights activists, church and anti-poverty volunteers, and other committed leaders. We began the night with inspiring words from Jackie Minicola, DRPS Staff Sergeant of the Domestic Violence Unit, who does tremendous work with her team in our community. We appreciated her message of resiliency and strength. As we saw showcased at the event, leadership looks different for everyone. Volunteers are the heart of a community, but often they are the hands. They are sometimes the front lines, but often in the background. They do the heavy lifting we may never see, which lightens the load for our friends and neighbours. They lift us up, and so it was my honour to return the favour at our award ceremony. I'd like to thank Felicio's Cakes, Berry Hill Food and Dream Bloom for the delicious food and decorations. And I'd also like to thank my staff for their work in making this first annual event so special. I look forward to next year when we can appreciate and recognize so many more leading women and girls who are making a difference yep. and making strides in our community. Thank you and again, congratulations. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. And I stand today to commemorate the 101st anniversary of the Battle of Image, Vimy Ridge. In the early mornings of April 9, 1917, Canadian soldiers stormed Vimy Ridge and took the land from the Germans. Together with British corps, the Canadians captured more ground, prisoners and artillery pieces than any previous British offensive in the war. Canadians would act with courage throughout the battle, and four of our soldiers would earn the Victoria Cross, the highest medal of military valour. Canada's military achievements during the war raised our international stature and helped us as a separate signature to the Treaty of Versailles, which ended the First World War. And in France, the Canadian National Vimy Memorial honours those soldiers listed as missing or presumed dead. Now, I have a long family history of military service. My grandfather, Major General Arthur Edward Potts, served in both World War I and World War II. His regiment served at Vimy, but he missed the action as he was recovering from shrapnel that he sustained in an earlier battle. His five brothers also served in the Great War, but three didn't make it. His brother Joseph, a private in the 2nd Battalion, may have been at Vimy because he died April 10, 1917, and is buried in France. His brother Henry Potts, a 2nd Lieutenant, died July 21, 17, at the age of 29, and his brother Robert Potts, a 2nd Lieutenant in the 25th Battalion, uh, was, died March 24, 1918, and is now buried in France. So grandfather's regiment went to Vimy, and I think there was a time when he considered that this was an important way that the Canadians should be contributing to the service. My father and his five brothers and sisters also supported, and they carried a mentality fighting at Vimy Ridge 
that came at unbearable cost. They displayed strength of character and a commitment to freedom. And to quote World War I veteran Reginald Roy, I became Canadian on Vimy Ridge. We became a nation there in the eyes of the world. It cut across French and English, rich and poor, poor urban and rural. Vimy Ridge confirmed that we were as good as any European nation. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Perry Salmons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we celebrate Vimy Ridge Day, I rise to pay tribute to one of my constituents, Mr. Rick Lund of Perry Sound. Mr. Lund has been a teacher at Perry Sound High School for more than 20 years. It is particularly fitting to speak of Mr. Lund's achievement today on Vimy Ridge Day. Mr. Lund's passion for preserving the memory of Canadians who fought for our country resulted in his receiving the Order of Perry Sound this past year. Among his many roles as an educator, Mr. Lund accompanied 40 Perry Sound High School students to France last year to take part in the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Vimy Ridge. He described the importance of that trip for him as the ceremony's effect on his students. During the ceremony, he witnessed the students' emotional response and the moment when they realized that everything they have is because of the sacrifice of others. Rick has also headed up a unique memorial project, the Community Remembrance Project in Prairie Sound, which I spoke on the House last November 2nd. Inspired by their trip to Vimy Ridge, Mr. Lund and the students launched a community-driven initiative to create banners with photos of local veterans to hang from lampposts around Perry Sound. It is important we all remember the 100,000 Canadians who fought at Vimy Ridge 101 years ago today, the 3,598 who died at the Battle of Vimy Ridge, and the 7,004 who were wounded. I want to personally thank Mr. Lund for all that he has done to ensure today's students remember the sacrifices of the past. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Showing respect and grieving with the community of Humboldt. Last night, we had the falls lit up, yellow and green, to honour those who lost their lives and were members of the Broncos. It's a sign to the community of Humboldt that we will never forget the coach, the assistant coach, the announcer, the 18-year-old stats keeper, the bus driver, the young players who were taken from us after this terrible accident. I understand what junior A players mean to a community. As someone who is, who is a junior A hockey fan, some of my happiest memories of a young kid were of junior A games. I watched the players practice every day at four o'clock when I was eight or nine years old. The junior A players even let me ride the bus with them as they played games across Ontario. These young leaders were taken from us far too young. I cannot even begin to imagine the pain their loss has caused for a small, small town of less than 6,000 residents. This is a tragedy that has impacted the very fabric of their community and, quite frankly, all of Canada. We all know how important hockey is in our communities. Tonight, I'm going back to Niagara to be and watch my community at our local Junior A game. We will grieve together for those 15 lost in this tragic accident. We've been having a moment of silence and we'll be collecting donations for the community. I want the family, the friends, and the community of Humboldt to know that we stand by you, we love you, we grieve beside you, and we will never, ever forget you. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, last Tuesday, April 3rd, marked the 15th anniversary of Oncology Nursing Day in Canada. Cancer does not discriminate. The disease affects people of all genders, age groups, and walks of life. Two in five Canadians will develop cancer in their lifetime. Each year, Oncology Nursing Day brings together oncology nurses, healthcare professionals, government leaders, media, and members of the public in collaborative activities to acknowledge the importance of oncology nursing. Oncology nurses endeavour to educate the public in the prevention and treatment of cancer, and oncology nurses in their respective practice settings are involved through prevention, detection, treatment, rehabilitation, or palliative care. The Canadian Association of Oncology Nurses is the national 
uh, organization that supports Canadian nurses to advance oncology nursing excellence through practice, education, research, and leadership to the benefit of all Canadians. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all the oncology nurses in my hometown of Ottawa, indeed in Ontario and across Canada. I want to thank you for being at the front lines of cancer treatment, care, and research. There are countless stories of oncology nurses profoundly impacting the lives of Canadian case cancer patients and their families. And again, I want to thank them for the important work that they do to support our families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member, famous, the member from Oxford. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Every April, Ontarians celebrate Be a Donor Month to support organ and tissue donation awareness. This year, Trillium Gift of Life Network is asking all Ontarians to join Donor Nation because one donor can save eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Today, I'd like to recognize Joanna and Riley Mitchell, constituents of my riding, who are the recipients of the Trillium Gift of Life Champ Network Champion Award which is given to Ontarians who have made a difference in organ and transplantation. Riley received a heart transplant at the age of seven months, and she and her mother have dedicated the past 12 years to volunteering at awareness events and sharing their story with the media. Joanna sits on the executive committee of the Life Donation Awareness Association of Midwest Ontario, while Riley regularly participates in the Canadian Transplant Games. Riley also donated her birthday presents to children at Sick Kids and often joins her mother at speaking events. Thank you, Joanne and Riley, for your contributions to organ and tissue donation awareness and for your involvement and leadership in our community. Over 1,500 Ontarians are waiting for a life saving organ transplant, and every, and every three days, someone in Ontario dies while waiting. This April, during Be a Donor Month, please consider taking two minutes to register as an organ donator and tissue online on, and minutes donor online at www.beadonor.com and talk to your family about organs and tissue donation. Be, by registering to become a donor, donor, you can save or change someone's life. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I was delighted to be in the House as the provincial budget was read, noting that uh, since the recession, Ontario's economy has gained over 800,000 net new jobs, and the unemployment rate has steadily declined to a 17-year low as of February 2018. And since 2014, Ontario's economy has grown more than Canada's and all other G7 countries. Out of the budget came the fact that Ontario is planning to bring new weekday GO rail service between the future Confederation GO station in Hamilton and Niagara Region starting in 2021, and there was an announcement of 21 new long-term care beds at Pleasant Manor in Virgil. The budget also reduces wait times by increasing hospital operating budgets across Ontario by some $822 million this year make an additional $2.1 billion investment in mental health and addiction care, providing free preschool for children aged two and a half until kindergarten, in addition to helping over 100,000 more children access licensed daycare over five years, expanding OHIP to include free prescriptions for everyone 65 and over, saving an average of $240 per person each year in OHIP, introducing a new Ontario drug and dental program and providing up to $750,000 to help seniors rather $750 to help seniors 75 and over with maintenance costs so they can continue to live comfortably at home and last but not least last. to in, to have uh, ODSP and OW payments Thank increased you. 3% per year over the next 3 years Thank you Further members statements the member from Bruce Gray Owen South Thank you very much Mr Speaker I'm honoured to rise in honour of recognizing the 101st anniversary of the Battle of Vimy Ridge and to sport the official Vimy tie in honour of all those brave heroes. 
Last year, I shared with the members in this House personal stories from my visit to France to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Vimy Ridge. Vimy Ridge was fought in April 1917 and remains known as the first battle when the Canadian Expeditionary Force fought united for the first time and defined us as a country. But having observed at Vimy last year the sight of so many Canadian Armed Forces boots, there were thousands of them dotted over the ridge. I was reminded why battles like Vimy, that claim so many lives, including those from my riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound, have had a profound impact on the way we as Canadians think about the sacrifices of those who gave their lives so we can enjoy peace, liberty, freedom, and security today. As I shared with the members last year, I was truly humbled joining with 25,000 fellow Canadians who paid homage to our forefathers' contributions and brave sacrifices in the First World War, including those to my riding, Billy Bishop, his cousin William Allen Bishop, and Leslie Kyle Armstrong. Billy Bishop's cousin, William Allen, who was three years older than Billy, enlisted in the 25th Battery in Toronto and was a gunner with the Canadian Field Artillery Regiment. He was killed in 1916 and commemorated at Vimy Ridge. Leslie Kyle Armstrong served as a private with the 147 Grey Overseas Battalion. While he served at both Vimy and Passchendaele, he was wounded at Passchendaele and returned home to Owen Sound in 1918. With Canadian soldiers, men and women continuing to serve around the world, it is important to remember the past. I'm a believer that how we remember the past determines how we will shape our future. Finally, I want to share a quote from the retired Chief of Defence and passionate patriot General Rick Hillier, who I believe captured our shared respect for the ultimate sacrifice our veterans made on our behalf. And I quote, Every Canadian should make this pilgrimage to Vimy to honour our valiant heroes and truly appreciate our history and how fortunate we are to be Canadians. I invent that members should join me in saluting every man and woman who wears our armed forces uniform, lest we forget. Thank you. I thank all members for their for their well, statements. It's therefore time for a point of I'm still speaking. A point of order from the member from Scarborough Agent Court. And I must consent to have the Bohemian purple golden flower girl to be present when I retable the Nanjing Massacre commemorative bill. The member from Scarborough, Agent Court, is seeking unanimous consent to have flowers at her desk when she introduces a bill. Do we agree? Agreed. 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 The member from Beaches East York on a point of order. Thank you again, Speaker. I believe we have unanimous consent to observe a moment of silence in honour of Emmy Ridge and to wear commemorative pins to commemorate that occasion. The member from Beaches East York is seeking unanimous consent for a moment of silence and to wear the pins that no one's wearing right now because we wait until unanimous consent to wear them. We'll now wear them. Do we agree? Agreed. Agreed. Could I ask everyone to please rise in the House to observe a moment of silence? Yes, everyone in the House. Thank you. For those that sacrificed their lives at Vimy Ridge, and celebrate that anniversary. Arrest their souls. You may now wear your pins. It is therefore now time for reports by committees. 